What's up guys, Thomas here, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use movement in your videos. Now, if you're thinking, why has he got a tripod in his hand? He's gonna teach us movement, so a tripod is the opposite of movement, right? Wrong. In this video, you're gonna learn how to use a tripod to maximize the movement in your videos, as well as how to use camera movement to maximum effectiveness. Let's crack into it. Huh, that's sick. Okay, so one of the reasons to use a tripod here is as you can see, we were getting these people moving in the shot in the kind of mid distance there. It's not the perfectly composed shot right now, but I just wanted to give you guys an example of how you can capture movement in the content within your frame, rather than always trying to move your camera to try and keep things interesting. If you put things on a tripod, you can really take the time to get some really nice composition, just kind of line things up a bit more. And what that's gonna enable you to do is get the best possible shot that you can whilst getting some movement going across the frame. So I'm just keeping in mind here that the people are kind of moving from left to right, kind of going right out of the frame as people are walking past and as the birds are also swimming in the river here. And that's gonna help me link it to the next shot. Mr. Goose, I reckon Mr. Goose is onto a winner. Bloody hell. So now we've got a shot of Mr. Goose just moving past the frame here. That's a nice bit of movement as well, of him just swimming through. Oh, ducks flying in. This is, this is hectic. Duck, duck, goose. Hello, dog. The movement of the goose itself can be interesting when you have a tripod because it really just draws attention to anything moving in the frame. The audience's eyes kind of find that thing. Rather than if you've got a shot that's handheld, then it becomes much less interesting. For example, if I take this off the tripod now and shoot this handheld, and let's say I'm kind of moving around a bit, I'm trying to kind of move my shot slightly, the shot becomes less interesting because it's actually moving. So unless we have a specifically planned camera movement where we might do a specific push in or specific side to side movement here, using a tripod can be a really great option. We're just getting a shot where we're kind of just waiting for people to walk past essentially and we're getting a movement of the people going from left to right across the frame. We've got a nice frame because we, the tripod's allowed us to keep that composition kind of locked in. It's not moving the whole time. Like as in a camera movement, essentially the composition is always moving. You know, you're getting a rule of thirds that's going kind of moving from point to point. Your framing is moving, the foreground is moving, but if you put it on a tripod, your composition is essentially a photo, it's locked off. And then whatever's moving within the shot is what provides the interest. That's quite cool to be fair. It's not the worst shot actually. So instead of getting a flock of birds, I just witnessed a flock of French school kids going past me on that bridge. But after they left, I actually got a shot and they're kind of, it was quite nice actually. It looked like they were all kind of marching kind of towards the bridge, like through the shot. Gave quite a good sense of depth having the bridge in the foreground and also managed to get on the rule of thirds, the cars going across this bridge. All right, so I've just given myself a cheeky little cameo here. I've uh, purposefully blurred myself out, got, got the, uh, the background in focus, so I'm not the main attention of the shot, because remember, we want the main attention of the shot to be the movement, things moving within the shot. And uh, fortunately, it looks like we've got some kayaks kind of drifting into frame here, and hopefully that will line up as a nice kind of movement within this sequence.
Okay, so let's talk about camera movement now. Camera movement can be used to provide a lot of interest in the frame when you don't necessarily have anything moving within the frame. So here we have this same shot as we got down there, but now we're up on the bridge. And okay, we've got a boat very slowly moving, but it's not really doing much. So what we can do is if we go left to right, we can have a fairly interesting shot simply because of the movement of the camera. If we wanted to do something a little bit more artistic, provide a little bit more interest here, we could potentially go in between the railings. We're gonna go just from left to right, and we can do something like this. All right, so here we've got a fairly uninspiring shot. If we just stand still, imagine that as a shot, a tripoded one, wouldn't be that interesting. There is lots of things moving here, obviously. <laughs> when I say things, I mean people. So what we're gonna be doing is stepping out of the middle here, symmetrical as we can, we can make it, and then pushing through just like this, tilting up to maybe reveal some of the sky there. And that's the kind of things that gimbals can do in terms of providing interest in shots. Now, something that is a potential limitation with gimbals is that they can provide an excuse. The excuse is that we can put camera movement in anything and make it look interesting. Here's another example. The shot's not very interesting, and we just by moving forward, it's kind of passable, you know? It doesn't look awful. It doesn't look super amateur or super, super boring, but it does still look boring. So by using a gimbal, what we're doing is we're not paying as much attention normally to composition, especially if you're just starting out. You might have a gimbal and you might be walking everywhere, getting lots of camera movement, but not paying attention to what's moving in your shot and not paying attention to the composition in your shot. Gimbals can be great to provide movement, but they can also be a big excuse and actually detract from your videos rather than forcing you to be really creative and think about your composition. So now let's give you a quick example of how you might use a gimbal in combination with what's naturally moving within your frame to create a shot that's next level. So by having the boat come towards me, and rather than following the motion of the boat, my motion is going against the boat, but turning the gimbal so I'm getting the boat moving across, we're creating this kind of parallaxing motion that also emphasizes the movement of the boat. So the boat's not going super fast, we're not trying to emphasize the speed, but having the movement of the boat contrasted by my movement is a really great way to include both the movement of the camera in your videos, as well as the movement of the subject in your frame. Awesome, I hope you enjoyed that video. I really would recommend and encourage you to use a tripod in your filming. It's really a great way to be able to hone your composition skills in a very relaxed, peaceful manner. If you'd like to check out my gear list, that is in the description below. And if you'd like to join us in a six week step-by-step -step program on how to capture your life and memories in a beautiful cinematic way, then check out the Life Capture Academy. Until next time, bye-bye.